folks, Zito here again. So this week, I've got a video interview that I did with Joan Barrett, who's one half of Bear Mountain Boats. Her and Ted have been making canoes and kayaks for the last 40 years, and Ted has a book out called Canoe Craft, which is, which is essentially the Bible for canoe making uh, that's sold over 100,000 copies. And so I was over there actually picking up a kit. I'm going to be building a canoe over the next several months, and we'll hopefully be putting out parts of that being built. But I also wanted to touch base with them because, you know, since I've kind of been making things over the last several years, um, I really wanted to talk to them and get their feelings and thoughts on what 40 years of crafting has been like for them and kind of what I have to potentially look forward to uh, in the rest of my lifetime kind of building these kinds of things. So without further ado, here's a quick video interview with uh, Joan Barrett from Bear Mountain Boats. Hope you guys enjoy. Take care. Well, I'm here in Westport in our brand new workshop. Ted Moores and I build, help people build um, their own canoes and kayaks and small boats. Um, in f we also build uh, C15 and C4 sprint racing canoes. What tips would you have for somebody like me that's an idiot that's going to go into this? Oh, well, <laughs> well, I think the thing is, is you have to want to do it. And you have to want to put the time in. You can't rush it. You need to put your best effort into every step. And having said that, I think that Ted has, has developed a really easy system that lets people have a good result. And we expect that you will get a really good result from the materials that we've provided you with and from the instructions that we've provided you with. Because we have been doing this for so many years and we've made every mistake that you can imagine. So we've, we've had to back up a lot of times and and it's, we know that it's worth doing well, and we know that if you do it well, then it's something that you're going to have in your life forever. You will pass it on to your children. You will get lots of use out of it, and it will be a really, really beautiful thing that you have created with your own hands. Your question was, what does it take to live a lifetime make as craftspeople? It takes everything. I'm serious about that. It takes not being afraid of anything. It takes making more mistakes than anyone you know has ever made and still getting up the next morning and going on. I think for a lot of years we just worked so hard and struggled a lot. We, we didn't, the banks don't like you. People wonder why you have this strange lifestyle. I mean, why would you? And I, I think that it was always really important for us to be self-sufficient and to do the things we wanted, even when the money never made sense. And for a lot of it, money, the money doesn't make sense. And I think that a lot of people would have a hard time with that. I mean, you have to sort of be strong enough and brazen enough to know that what you're doing is what you should be doing. And I think that's the big thing. I, we're not selling Coca-Cola and we're not, we're, we're providing meaning to people's lives. And I don't mean to sound so high and mighty about that because I don't feel that way. I just really feel blessed that I can, I can get to know so many interesting people who care about something that they're doing and that I get to help. I get to send them a brochure or send them a plan and, and, and connect on a personal level with, with people's creativity. I think that's such a privilege. If it's Ted and I together, I would tell my 30-year-old self to go and get a government job so that Ted could do what he loves to do and it wouldn't be such a, a struggle. Because sometimes, I mean, at 74, I see that we are getting older and we can't do all the things that we used to do. And that's a kind of hard thing when, when the rest of society is reaping the benefits of their huge pensions. So in some ways, I, I do tell people, but a lot of people say, you know, I want to be a boat builder, I, what would you, what's your best advice? And I would say that someone in your relationship should have a day job. I can say that, but we didn't do it, did we? So. Any decent Nick Offerman stories that no oh. one knows about? <laughs> I mean, maybe people do know this about Nick, but Nick is the most amazing friend that you could ever have. He's a kind and generous person, and even though he's rude and dirty and exposes himself <laughs> to national audiences, he's a family guy. Like he values his family and his friends above anything. He is a really wonderful, 
cool person who is true to himself and true to values, family values. I mean, he really does stay home playing Scrabble with his wife at night. He, I don't know that people would really believe that. Yeah, yeah, where are we going now? Oh, is there a plan? <laughs> we, we think we make plans and, and then the, what you end up with is something completely different than what you thought it was going to be. Uh, that happens to me all the time. So I don't know. Hopefully, there are still a few more canoe trips in me and kayak trips and some time on the electric boat. And hopefully Ted will continue to build these big racing canoes and lots of kids will get involved in the sport and keep paddling. So that's our plan. It's sort of one day at a time. It's always been that way. Even though we think it's different, it's, it's always that way. <laughs> so.